I'm going to speak to you now about capacitance, both in series and in parallel. I like this dog, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing. I think uh, a lot of people think this way about capacitors, but if you think of them as, um, as like a mini battery, I think it's a pretty effective way to think about it. So that's because a little capacitor, it can charge and it can discharge in a circuit. So you can actually charge it up and then you can actually discharge it. So it kind of acts like a battery, uh, except it discharges pretty fast. But um, we have this thing called capacitance. Um, and that's a property here. And you're actually given this equation on your formula booklet. So it goes C equals Q over V. This is the equation you get. So uh, this one here tells you this. We have the capacitance, which is a new uh, thing we're measuring. It's a new quantity. It's measured in what's called farad after Faraday. Um, keep in mind, though, the capacitance unit, like one farad, is actually very, very large, which means when you're looking at real capacitors, they tend to have very, very small versions of this. So in other words, don't be surprised if you get like microfarads or nanofarads or things like that. So very, very small amounts of farad because one farad is actually a huge amount. Of course, we have charge and charge is measured in coulombs and we have potential difference, which is in volts. So this is your equation here. That's about it, really. Uh, just Q over V. So if we look at a parallel plate capacitor, I mean, we tend to actually, I mean, the actual circuit diagram looks like this. That's the one where you have these two parallel lines that are the same length. Remember, if there's one really short, one really long, that's the battery, right? So that would be this right here. But in this case, a parallel plate capacitor, I'm actually trying to show you the real thing here. Here's what it would look like, you know, sort of seen sort of from the side. That's my attempt at least at doing that. So you've got these parallel plate capacitor with A. There's a surface area A. So there's an area of each plate that would be in meters squared. You have your capacitance, which is again in farads. You have something called permittivity. Now, uh, this thing where we use this Greek symbol epsilon. Epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space. You can look that up. That's if you put like air or vacuum or something in the middle here. Um, but what we can do is, oh, by the way, I'll talk about that in a second, actually. I just want, don't want to get ahead of myself. We have the distance uh, separation between the plates, that's in meters. This is just a constant you can look up, uh, at least for epsilon zero. But each different material has its own permittivity. And so what we can do is we can add things inside, like, you know, with between a parallel plate capacitor. For example, we can add something called a dielectric. And what that does, um, it'll be a material then whose, I mean, you have to look up its permittivity. It might be something different. But its goal, the reason why we add dielectrics is to increase the capacitance. We want to increase, you know, what the charge per uh, volt that it can sort of store, you could say. Um, so what it does, it reduces the potential difference between them. And imagine this, if you reduce this, if you make V smaller, does it make sense then that C will get bigger? Because if you divide by a smaller number, your answer is actually larger. So that's why it reduces V, but the goal is to increase C. So that's the point of a dielectric. Um, that's about it really for capacitors. So you'll see it's actually not nearly as bad as it seems. The equations might seem a little bit wacky, but I promise you they're not so bad. We've got series capacitors, which means if we have a battery or a cell and we put in three capacitors in series, you might think, oh, I remember how that goes. It's like a resistance where the effective resistance is going to be just add them all up. But capacitors work in the opposite way that you think. So luckily you have this equation as well, one over C and it says series like this, they work like resistors in parallel. In other words, it goes one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3 plus dot, dot, dot. So this is the equation. And luckily you don't have to memorize this. This is given. So this is on your data booklet. So this is really nice. So again, it just works a little bit like um, parallel resistors is how you deal with series uh, capacitors. And conversely, if we have parallel capacitors where things here have a choice uh, where they can go, we also have an equation for that. And it says, um, so again, it goes opposite. So you'd think that C in parallel should be the complicated one with the one over whatever stuff. Nope, that's the easy one. That's where you just add them up. So you just add them up until you have all the capacitors dealt with. And these are your equations that you get. I mean, they're on your data booklet. You don't have to memorize them. 
Uh, now comes what I think is maybe a, maybe a too simplistic example, but it's just to get you practice here. So we have three capacitors. So we have five microfarads, 10 microfarads, and 20 microfarads, and they're all connected in series. What's the combined capacitance? In other words, what's the effective capacitance? So what you could do, of course, you put them all in series, right? You have one, then another, oops, not resistors, sorry. Ooh, that was bad of me. Capacitors. There we go. This one here is five microfarads. This one's 10 and this one's 20. And so what you do, of course, you'd use this idea, right? That one over, so maybe we'll use that equation, the one over C in series, how do we use it? We say it's one over five. Keep in mind, since they're all microfarads, I can actually be lazy and just say one over five plus one over 10 plus one over 20. Um, and of course, then that gives you your C in series then you know you add these up and then you do one over that um let's assume this is on paper two so something like this so i can just do one fifth plus one tenth plus one twentieth and i do one over that answer and i end up with two point when i say here oh i should have been careful i should have said 5.0 oh, shouldn't i something like that so let's say it's two point let's say nine times ten to the uh well, we could say microfarads. It's going to be the same unit that we just had. So it's going to be microfarads. That's it. That's how we can do it. I mean, keep in mind what we can do, right? What if, um, actually, I'm really not very really satisfied with that example. Let's do a better one. So I'll just make one up here. So this is something that you might see on a circuit diagram. You might easily see something like this. What if I see when it goes like this, like this, and then this is in parallel to this. Something like this. I say, now what's the equivalent? Um, so here I could say C1 and C2 and C3, let's just say. And let's give these here values. Actually, no, I shouldn't give, call them. I should actually give them values. So let's just say it's um, 5 microfarads. We'll keep it 10 microfarads, and this one here will be 20, just like we had before. Let's just figure that out instead. I think that's maybe more useful to see what happens when you have a series in parallel, so they're a combination. Well, normally, what I would do is redraw the series one. So I would make this right here simpler by just drawing this right here. In other words, what's the equivalent? You know, I'm trying to draw this and figure out what happens in series. So these two things are here in series. I'll say one over C in series of just this top part. It's going to be one over five plus one over 10. And one over five plus one over 10, let's see, that's going to be, uh, that's the same thing as saying two over 10. That's the same thing as one over five. So then I have three over 10. Then I have 10 over three is my answer for, um, I should be very, very careful actually. I should say this is technically three over 10. Um, and then I could say therefore that uh, this value right here then is not gonna be three over 10, it's gonna be 10 over three. Uh, let's maybe just do it the actual values here. So we'll do 10 over three. So this is, um, 3.33 microfarads. That's the equivalent now. That's because that was one over CS and I wanted CS by itself. So that's this value. Now I've redrawn this as this and this is 20. And then what do I do now? Now I can redraw it as just one capacitor because now I have them in parallel. And remember what we do for parallel? We do C in parallel is just equal to the two numbers added together. So it's 3.33 plus 20. Uh, so that will give me, let's see, 23.33 microfarads. Now, if I wanted to keep this 5.0, you know, with two significant figures everywhere, then I can say, fine, it's um, basically this end, this ends up being 23 microfarads. So you can say that is the same thing. So that's, if I drew it as just one capacitor. Maybe that's more useful to have shown you a parallel and series one. Because things like this can show up often on exams, and I just want to make sure you're ready for all the different kind of things that they can throw at you. So now we've got capacitors ready. Now let's look at what happens when we charge them and discharge them. That's coming in the next video.